Hey. Today's video is about um, gallbladder hyperkinesia um, or bilary hyperkinesia. So I got, I have the diagnosis um, after a long, a long investigation, and uh, and I'm still very sick because I don't have my gallbladder up. Um, the cause of why it happened is you're going to have to listen for yourself. So this is, uh, I'll go through the story of what happened to me. So bilary hyperkinesia, uh, there's bilary hyperkinesia, and uh, that's rare, so it's uncommon. It's like uh, 1 in 40,000 people um, outside of the U.S., and uh, 80 80 percent of that or more 83 percent are women so it's a lot uh, rare for men so this is this is my journey there's all there's also bilary dyskinesia which is a hypo gallbladder um which is which is fairly common so this is hyper and believe me it didn't start in the most normal way um so i was i was just diagnosed but after I chased a radiologist myself, if I didn't under, if I, if I didn't, so I, I had to chase a radiologist to get the diagnosis. Uh, I wouldn't have a diagnosis if, if I didn't chase him. For whatever reason, my pain disorders, my different syndromes, drug reactions throughout my life were uh, extremely uncommon. Most people who suffer this are women at 83% versus men. That's very limited information, too. Um, so if you do the math for a man, it would be like 1 in 200,000 people. Bilary dyskinesia is rather common, and that's an ejection fraction on a high disk scan of 35% or 33 below 33% is what they call a hypogallbladder. Um, your ejection fraction is how quickly your bile comes out of your bile duct when you eat. And hyper is above 65%, but especially um, over 80% for um, bilary hyperkinesia. Mine is 92.3, so that's very high. There isn't much information on this, and it's not well understood. Um, both hypo and hyper can, uh, sorry, cause acute gallbladder attacks, um, but hyper cause, but hyper can cause, and I had to find this, causes muscle weakness. So when you get an attack, you feel like you're, like you're suddenly real, super weak. Um, like other people, my story is unusual because there are no identifiable causes. This is a long story. Since June 2021, I have suffered hundreds of attacks with meals, and I can't eat fats, and I can't eat butter anymore. So just overnight, bam, I couldn't eat butter. Um, I already have rare enough disorders, uh, pain disorders, um, that I didn't have a name to for almost 20 years, and this feeling... Um, not knowing what it was, was felt no different when it came to physicians. No matter the pain in my gallbladder and liver area, there were no answers. Every test was completed, sometimes three times, like CTs. Um, so this is how mine began. This is how it began. Mine began with the vaccine. I had an allergic reaction to uh, the Moderna vaccine. Don't take me off air because of that. Huh. I hope you can see the trouble I faced already. It's possible that I had a predisposition in my gallbladder, um, especially under a powerful drug like Toradol. Toradol is also called Ketorolac. And the opiates I use for pain plus boscopan and CBD, cannabinoid. But this isn't the way I was. Without a doubt, I believe the injection triggered it to occur for reasons I can't identify. My diet had to be changed completely. I felt pressured to get the injection, the vaccine, um, by society in Canada, 
um, so many people were talking about it and people were and so I got it prior prior to the Moderna shot I suffered with chronic acute pain uh, but I was used to it and I was always at a baseline level for years so I remember what I was like um, I have other abdominal syndromes but not this so this is what happened at 4 p.m. on June 4th um, I got my shot I felt okay and I went to bed I, I was okay when I went to bed that night when I got up the next day I felt okay until the end of the night I ate my dinner at around 10 or 11 so it began when my dinner when I was finishing my dinner and my pain never begins at the at the very end of my night unless I like move the wrong way or something I got a wicked pain uh, up my right sorry down my right leg and thigh I can't remember if it went up or down my pre-existing pain disorders increased a lot my muscles hurt a lot and my skin was burning because I have um, neuropathic pain. I have many different neuropathic disorders. So I went to bed in a lot of pain. I couldn't understand what was happening. Um, at 3 a.m., so just like, you know, like four hours later, so I took my sleep meds. I woke up because I couldn't breathe. I was really short of breath and my legs and arms were trembling. Um, I couldn't hold my arm to stop the shaking, so I, I grabbed my arm and I couldn't stop it from shaking. It was that bad. Since my pain began in 2004, I haven't had a single cold or flu. Not one in almost 20 years. Even with all this, I tried to sleep more, but I couldn't because I couldn't breathe. At around 6 6 or 7 a.m. I took my meds and I was so agitated I was so irritable when I reached my counter my flanks so it wasn't just one side it was both sides were in acute pain and I could only hold on to my counter for balance I was scared I had a fever for two days that day as I as I had my bath I noticed a large rash on my abdomen and chest. It stayed for six consecutive days without any change. The, abdo the abdominal pain was the most disabling. It just wouldn't stop no matter what I did. Food made it much worse. I still exercised and walked anyways. I do, I do that no matter what. I was on powerful Toradol, which is given for gallbladder attacks and kidney stones. Um, give me a second here to catch my breath. I was, so I was on Toradol, which is powerful, which is given for gallbladder attacks and kidney stones. The pain through my back was so disabling at the start that my dad had to walk, I had to ask my dad to walk with me outside because I could hardly move. During the first four days, I knew full well what caused it. So then I knew. I remember cursing out loud that my central nervous system was rebooted uh, because I have a serious autoimmune disorder and uh, two of them uh, full body intractable pain but the one that concerned me was my adhesive arachnoiditis in my spine so I have inflammation in my spine so despite my pain I worked out and kept walking at the start my pain uh, wasn't only when I was eating it was there for about um, for a full week 24 hours a day it was a nightmare um, but when I ate it got even worse after two days the fever left but it took about 10 days for the muscle pain to die down 
On the sixth day, I did go to the hospital, which was stupid that I didn't before. I didn't want to be admitted. When I went, the emergency physician had no answers and no physicians on earth could have answered an allergic reaction to Moderna because nobody was liable. That was all over the news. No one's liable for this, for these shots. They made that clear on the news before they were administered. This shortness of breath is my gallbladder. I haven't had a cold or flu for almost 20 years. Um, only 30 mere hours after, the, after my shot, do you think it's a coincidence that gallbladder hyperkinesia began? Because I don't. This is the point I make. I have proof that I had an allergic reaction from the rash and fever and the, you know, the just general uh, muscle aches and pains and all the shaking and stuff. What a coincidence it would be for it to begin at the exact same time. With the reaction, meaning my abdominal pain began the moment I, so when I woke up with that reaction at 3 a.m., this abdominal pain was here and it never left. The, abdom the abdominal pain never left. It started at the exact time as the allergic reaction, but the only thing I was left with was chronic acute abdominal pain. It's very strange, um, but that's what happened. Try explaining that to any physician or emergency physician and see what they say. No one except my family physician took any of it seriously. I'm used to this kind of thing from being misdiagnosed throughout my life for many things. So now you know my history of how it began. This is what it does and the journey I've been on. Just a second. It's important to know that I was on Toradol for my spine and pain when this happened. So when you get a gallbladder attack, you go to the hospital, they'll give you something like Toradol first. From what I see, it's, so it's about 1 in 40,000 people, but that's women. Um, the pain is, is consuming. Because of another abdominal syndrome, so I do have another abdominal syndrome, but I've been used to that for a long time, my diet was already restricted. I was eating eggs every day. I was eating like six to eight of them. Um, I traveled, and I know that's a top killer of gallbladder attacks that causes them or triggers them. I traveled to the local hospital about 13 times that summer alone. They thought it was a gallstone at the start, but no test showed anything. Because of the pain, they did an endoscopy, um, which revealed four peptic ulcers from Toradol which is an NSAID, which is what they give you. Uh, not, it wasn't due to H. pylori. I told them straight out and it only confused my story further that it was only an incidental finding. So from the start I said, I've been on this a long time, this tour all, it's probably just an incidental finding. That's what I felt because I'm the one who got the shot, right? I know what, what happened. I have four pain suicide diseases of neuropathic pains. Now I have these new gallbladder attacks and they found four ulcers. What was I supposed to do? Now I faced a horrible choice. No choice. Come off Toradol um, to find out what's really going on and to heal the ulcers and have no pain protection for my gallbladder attacks and four pain suicide diseases like neuropathic pains in my neck and shoulder and my legs and back. So the Toradol really helps with that stuff. Many things, change, many things changed along the way. My bowel habits changed because of the attacks. I won't go into that further. Um, suddenly I couldn't eat butter, fatty foods like eggs. Eggs are at the top of the list for gallbladder attacks. Slowly I removed half a Toradol and I went that way. Like, you know, half every two weeks type thing. I was on four of them, 10 milligrams of Toradol, so 40 in all. My condition seemed to improve when I got to two. Symptoms always came back I, when I just when I thought I was going to get better. My physician upped my opiate by 10 milligrams, and that did help. Unfortunately, my abdominal attacks got much worse, or sorry, got worse because the Toradol was covering them up. When I got to zero, it was crystal clear that my diet had to change. 
I'll get to my symptoms in a second. I know you're probably waiting. Instead of the egg yolks, I switched to egg whites. My diet now is gallbladder friendly, but it doesn't matter. Even oatmeal triggers attacks. When I wrote this, I was eating oatmeal and I was having an attack. The pain, uh, so the pain goes through my back, or sorry, the pain through my back lessened when the eggs were removed, so that did help. And removing the butter. For me right now, with a 92.3% ejection fraction, I generally feel unwell uh, because my gallbladder region uh, in a widespread area is constantly aching. I can't touch the area or we'll set it off. I can't put my hand in there. It's that bad. Um, and it's far away from my stomach, so I knew, like it was, I knew it was my gallbladder. It's been 10 months now since the complete removal. These are full gallbladder attacks with some symptom differences um, as gallbladder dyskinesia um, because I found that hyper attacks can cause severe muscle weakness when they happen. This has affected my psychological state with irritability and agitation. I need it out. My surgeon was booked incorrectly, so they forgot to book his 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 hours for this year of, of any person for that to happen to. And he was a good, by the province, meaning, so he retired because that happened. So I was left in the balance. Sorry, I gotta, just give me a sec. When I eat something, I get I can get chills, pain through my back, up my right and even left shoulder, despite not being in literature. It's caused many GI disturbances, right upper belly pain, nausea. I haven't vomited, likely because I use CBD and buscapan and opiates. Feeling really full uh, quickly, feelings of hunger, gastritis, and stomach problems. These symptoms can be very intense. Also for me, it causes uh, shortness of breath, like like now, um, because I already have throat dysphonia. So when this happened, my throat dysphonia got worse by 70%. You can go back in my videos before I had this. I'm not sure I can make comparisons. I suffer from kidney stones and other similar pains. It's about as bad as the worst of a kidney stone can do. I already suffer with anxiety. These attacks can make me feel dissociated because the anxiety from these attacks are so bad. It's really difficult to concentrate with my gallbladder aching like this. I feel like I'm dying, so that's what it feels like. It's feel like you're dying. Also makes me nervous, confused. I have, I have no more feelings of lucidity. My lucidity, I've lost my lucidity. The constant aching took it away. I can't wait to get it out. Um, see, one of the things is I have a history of severe, I have uh, severe abdominal adhesions called keloid scarring. And so, but I know I need it out. They're just laparoscopic cuts, but I'm still worried. I feel bad for anyone else going through this and not finding an answer. I had to literally correct doctors and tell them the test was abnormal. When no abnormalities can be identified a HIDA scan should be ordered to measure the bioflow ejection fraction after an injection of an enzyme called CCK, which imitates real digestion of a meal. When mine was ordered, I wasn't warned that they didn't have CCK, and they only used Ensure for the test. I'm lactose intolerant, so I couldn't drink it. They said they didn't have CCK for two years, and I was upset. They're supposed to have that. I ate a fatty peanut bar that I had in my pocket um, and I drank water. What else could I do? There are no values for a peanut bar for a HIDA scan. I was there anyway, so, so I got the two hour scan after I had it. The value came out at 25%. The radiologist was wrong by not calling it gallbladder dyskinesia, which is anything under 35% ejection fraction. All that means is your gallbladder is pumping either too fast or too slow. So hypo, too slow, hyper, too fast. 
my abdominal surgeon said the, the bar I ate would equate to the CCK, which turned out not to be true. So who do you trust? The surgeon wrote the diagnosis for me. I wasn't satisfied because I didn't use CCK. After many calls, later the radiologist offered CCK after my complaints and I got another two hour scan. I wasn't expecting anything because, uh, you know, when you get to that point, um, nothing was revealed in anything. When the scan was finished, he said, I'll give the results right now. He said, your bile flow is just fine. It's 92.3%. I thought, that's good, right? It's almost at 100%. As I was leaving, I asked him, because, um, because he reads high to scans for a living, right? That's what these people do. I said, if there's, if there's um, hypo, is there not hyper? It only makes sense. He told me no. But later that night, I found out that wasn't true. So I looked it up. I'm at the extreme end of bilary hyperkinesia. Also, I was worried the whole time that my gallbladder dyskinesia, because of the opiates, would trigger it. So if it's hypo, that means that opiates, if you take an opiate, it can cause bilary dyskinesia. But hyper, no. So I worried about that. It was good to know. Because I've been on them for 20 years, so it didn't make sense. I never had this before. Why would it just happen now? Recently, I went to an appointment to a GI specialist, and she claimed she didn't know what gallbladder hyperkinesia was. That's like a house builder not knowing what wood is. This is what I face, man. Um, she must have known. She was gaslighting me. She was purposely doing it. What have I learned, not just through this, but my whole life? Investigate yourself and be your own advocate if you can. I, I don't know how many... I'm going to stop in a second here. Be your own advocate if you can. Research it. Don't listen to what people say until you see it yourself. So I make this video for people with bilary hyperkinesia or gallbladder hyperkinesia. Bilary dyskinesia or bilary hyperkinesia. I make this also because it happened in the most confusing way. Seeing as how there's literally a limited amount of information on hyper, because it's uncommon, I do believe the Moderna shot caused it because it arrived with the allergic reaction. I would, because, you know, the allergic reaction goes and I'm left with that abdominal pain. What am I supposed to do? I was so confused about it and I still am. Did the injection reboot my central nervous system? and cause limited uh, inflammation or something pre-existing. So now I need it out. The diet change of lowering fats was completely necessary. Maybe some people have symptoms, some people only have symptoms when they get an attack, but for me, it's always there. I can't predict what it does. I can have one good day and two weeks of hell. It's harder to diagnose a patient who's already on four colic medications. Man, I've missed my boscopan only like a couple times since I've had this, and I've almost been on the ground. That's when I realized I know I, had, I missed my boscopan. Um, if you felt fine and then got a vaccine and the next day had an allergic reaction with unbearable abdominal pain and wouldn't go away, what would you do? And what would you say to a doctor? When I get really sick, walking really helps. So with this, walking helps. I have no comfort level right now, and I can't wait to have it out. Canada is brutally slow in medical matters. So looking into this a bit further, like why is this, why, what causes this? The only thing I can see, um, a lot is women getting this, probably because of um, having babies. So intraluminal pressure. I can't see anything else that would cause it. I've had abdominal problems, so I wonder if that has anything to do with it, but it's hard not to see that this came with the Moderna reaction. So, so what else can I say, right? So that's it. Need my gallbladder out. Thanks for watching.